I think there's a bit of chicken little sky and is, is, is falling stuff going on here. Um, I didn't think they were that bad against, uh, uh, against Iceland. They created tons of chances. And, you know, even if, if that penalty had gone in or if they'd converted one of the many chances that, that they had, you know, you're looking at, at a 2-1 win, three points in the bag, nerve settled, and you're taking on a Croatia side that while they came out with a start, obviously there's been a lot of turmoil in the Croatian camp, Nikola Kalinic going home as well, so we'd all feel a little better about it. But clearly I think this is the turning point game in, in Argentina's group. Ali, you think there was an overreaction to that draw against Iceland? Maradona came out and called it a disgrace, didn't he? <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> anyone was it's, it's, it's hard to take Maradona yeah. seriously every time he speaks, but I, look, and I love me some Maradona, by the way. Yeah. Um, can I just say that when you think of, yes, Argentina created chances. Yes, there's a missed penalty. Yes, there were opportunities for Argentina to win the game. So did Iceland. Mm. Bjarnason mm. had a chance early on in the game. There were any time that Iceland decided to go on the counter, they created problems for Argentina. And that's the real concern for me is that Croatia has more talented players than Iceland does. Mm. And if Croatia is able to control the midfield with the better players that they have individually between Rakitic and Modric against Macerano and Biglia, I like Croatia in that middle of the midfield. So then you just have to turn your, a, a blind eye to all of that and just say, you know what, Lionel Messi is going to resolve it for us. Mm. And if that's the approach that Argentina is going to take, then it's difficult to see them advancing in this tournament. Now, having said all of that, if Lionel Messi has a tremendous game and then the other players alongside him in the attack are able to create and finish opportunities as well, then yes, Argentina wins this match. Mm. Modric and Rakitic, the key in here for Croatia. Yeah. Anyway, they're a super talented team. I saw them in the playoffs. They easily uh, beat Greece over the two games. Or, uh, not that Greece were pretty poor, I have to say. But, but Modric just controls it. And if Argentina don't get to him and they have enough possession, he can control the game. If he can control the game, it means they can get the fullbacks forward. That's what they like to do, Croatia. When they get the fullbacks forward, they look to whip the ball in early, and obviously they're spearheaded by Mario Mandzukic. So uh, this is a very good side. Is it, mm. is it, uh, would it be a huge shock if Argentina uh, were not to win this game? No, it wouldn't. It, it's a very different sort of test for Argentina, this game, isn't it? It uh, is. As opposed to the Iceland one. Yeah, and when they played against Iceland, it was the wide players that I thought were disappointing. Meza made a couple of good diagonal runs, but when he was in possession, couldn't go past any one to get crosses in. Di Maria, and I think Ali, you called him one of the most stupid players. That you know, uh, one of the dumbest, dumbest players. players yes. Dumbest players. <laughs> yes. he, didn't, he made the wrong decision time and time again. And then you've got two holding midfield players, Mascherano and Bilia, that aren't 